Okay, one. One, two, three. three. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Kelly. How are you doing? Pretty good. We have to let people know what we're doing. Yeah, we have some, some guests today. We're on uh, recording live on Zoom. Um, so we have uh, Joanne and Mary, Knit Admin, and Joanne is Mom Diggity, and Natalie, Super Kip, and Valerie, Valerie29, all joining us today on the, on the podcast. So that's a lot of fun. So we have two things we need to talk about right off the bat. First of all, bees. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's an exciting day here. Uh, Robert was out in the backyard while I was getting ready to record and uh, he's like, Kelly, Kelly, <laughs> your bees are swarming. And so usually what that means is that they're, a lot of them are out all at the same time. He doesn't always realize when is actually a swarm and when is just bees orienting. So I came out, but I always worry that, you know, my bees are leaving, which is, you don't mm -hmm. want that to happen, right? So I come out and it's not my bees that are leaving, but some bees have arrived and they're all uh, flying all around the, the ginkgo tree and this shrub that's down below the tree and um, looking like they're trying to figure out where to land. They're all just flying around. And then there are quite a few bees investigating one of the empty uh, hive boxes that I have from a colony that just didn't make it. Um, so. Uh, I stood there and watched for a little while and realized that they had actually clustered on the bush. And then it, it also looked like they were starting to, you know, be serious about moving into the other box, but I couldn't be sure that it wasn't just two different groups. So mm -hmm. I tried to get them to go into a box. I put a box up close to where they were and they started to do that and they ended up back in the air. And now there's a big cluster that they've reclustered over by the box where everybody was looking, investigating. So I yeah. think that what had been a, you know, a dead hive, a dead colony, um, I'm now going to have another, a new colony from a swarm from somewhere. Um, not from one of my hives. Cause I don't, I actually don't think any of my hives are big enough or, or strong enough to swarm. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, I think it must be coming from, from somewhere else. So okay. we'll see. Yeah pretty exciting yeah yeah it's kind of the tail end of swarm season here um, although i did see a swarm moving into a space under a, the sidewalk uh, a couple mm -hmm. of days ago when i was out walking you know how uh, uh, roots will buckle you know buckle the pieces mm -hmm. of the sidewalk and then there's like a little gap i don't mm -hmm. know why they thought that looked like a reasonable place to move into but there was a large group of bees coming in and out of mm -hmm. both ends of that little tube under the sidewalk um, yeah. in, in some neighborhood that I was walking in the other day. So, so anyway, yeah, exciting bee stuff is happening here today and hopefully they will like the accommodations and decide to stay and not, not, um, not I'll go, Oh, you know what? No, we'll leave. Bye. <laughs> Because I had a swarm do that too. I was all excited. And then the next day or two or three days later, poof, gone. They, uh, had... they rejected the accommodations. They didn't mm -hmm. like it. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason. Well, my wildlife news is I was out, uh, as you know, working on the deck, doing the demo. And I heard a noise and uh, some uh, birds have built a nest in the, up under the eaves of the garage, oh. which that section is pretty low. It's just maybe, I mean, I can touch it standing on the ground. I could just reach up and touch the nest. So um, I just decided I'm going to ignore it, let them have that because there's babies. You can hear the babies. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to leave it till the babies are, are grown. And then. Oh yeah. Is it your garage or is it the garage? Is it the garage? Oh, my garage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My garage, not the neighbors, mm -hmm. but um, you know, where the, the, the Chinese dog is, the food dog is, it's mm -hmm. right above that. Oh, okay. um, but th thinking of unusual places, thinking of the bird's nest, uh, my former mother-in-law uh, on the front door, she always would put a wreath out there for all the different seasons. And one spring birds built a nest in the wreath on the front door. So they couldn't use the front door, 
sofa all the time. The, the babies were there. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I had my to go mom, in and out of the garage. My mom has like a pillar, you know, at, at her porch, uh, like a square mm -hmm. pillar. And then the top of the square pillar is um, uh, like a platform. And so mm -hmm. she would have a pair of doves nest at the top of that, at the top of that pillar where it, you know, where it leveled off and then a smaller, like smaller thing went up to support the, the porch. Mm -hmm. um, but she yeah. would always have a, a dove nest there and they continued, it was up high enough, I guess, that they continued to use their, you know, they were, they were able to continue using their front door, but then you yeah. would see the dove when you'd go out, but you know, they don't mm -hmm. go in and out that much. So. Yeah. Um, so then the other thing we have to, we have to mention is Ravelry. Oh my gosh. And the new look. Yes. <laughs> so, so tell your experience. So I was on Ravelry this morning, which is, you know, what I do in the morning. And I was posting, um, updating my, my project page. And so it was taking me a while because I'd gone in there and I'd opened the thing to put in more information and I was measuring things and counting because um, it was yardage and weight I wanted to put in for some some hand spinning and so then I click post to post it and the site turns totally white with like really kind of skinny lettering and I'm like okay what just happened that's weird <laughs> and and like did I just get hacked or did Ravelry get hacked or what happened so I closed my browser um, and I thought, well, maybe something's going wrong with my, my, my browser, you know, or my internet connection or something. So I closed my browser, reopen it. <laughs> and there on the front page of Ravelry is our new look. <laughs> so I read the little, um, the little blurb about it and I went poking around and everything. I mean, I could find everything that, that I normally use. Um, it doesn't sound like they've made a lot of, a lot of, feature changes yet but that those are on the on the horizon um, they've just made basically made a branding change at this point yeah and they have a new logo uh yeah. and we were just this morning before we uh started recording we were reading some of it because they they this is brave of them i think is that they've put a a link for people to make comments and yeah i would say it's 50 50 favorable and unfavorable I um, think it's a lot more than 50% unfavorable. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could be just that those are the ones that stick in my mind. Um, yeah. But I do remember thinking, okay, people who are commenting, um, you know, you have to recognize how brave that is, first of all, to ask mm -hmm. for that kind of feedback. I mean, it's a good idea. Yeah. It's good business sense, mm -hmm. um, but very, very difficult to invest your heart and soul into something and then hear that kind of feedback, mm -hmm. the feedback and the people giving the feedback clearly, you know, never learned like we do as educators about warm and cool comments. And th this idea that, you know, you, you don't just pop in with a, with a negative, a negative critique, you, you know, say, look for something nice to say, and then you say the thing that is your criticism. And then hopefully you can say another nice thing on your way out. <laughs> yes. So. Well, I, I, I mean, I don't really, it's very, well, it was interesting. Just the comments that I read briefly, there was a lot of uh, comments about how white it is, the background, mm -hmm. um, a lot of comments, which I thought was funny. People who were saying, you know, I, I have, um, issues with my eyesight and it's too much contrast. It's too white. Other people are saying I have um, vision issues and it's great. It's so much easier to read. So I don't know. It must uh, depend on the individual. And then my only other comment though, is that it looks like Craftsy, the logo that they've changed to. It looks like the old Craftsy logo to me. Um, yeah, the and I missed the similar, little, I think. and I missed the little um, rainbow flag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'd be my only comment. So anyway, it's just been, what has it been about 30 minutes since we noticed the change? So <laughs> yeah, it hasn't <laughs> been need, very long. We need I, time. I did tell myself, okay, don't, uh, don't be that person who just doesn't like change and is like, I don't like it cause I like my old Ravelry. But yeah, but, um, so I, I told myself I would, you know, give it some time. You don't want to be like me in the grocery store. 
when oh. they move my, oh my cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever something like that happens in the grocery store, you know I hear about it from Aunt Betty. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, so we'll see how how this change goes. But I I do I I am very um uh, I just am in admiration of the Ravelry team for for actually saying you know we want to know what you think mm -hmm. of these changes because that's a really hard thing to do listen to or read criticism after criticism after criticism of something that that you put a lot of effort into and and you absolutely have to know going in that the criticisms are going to be there even if the mm -hmm. majority of people like it it's the people who feel really strongly about something who take time to comment and, you know, I mean, student evaluations are an example, right? <laughs> and also you have to, you, 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 so you have this, you know, Oh, too many examples. Oh, she doesn't mm -hmm. give enough examples. Oh, she mm -hmm. goes too fast. Oh, she goes too slow. Oh, she talks too fast. Oh, she talks too slow. I mean, there's, you can, you can like sort them into piles, right? And on, mm -hmm. on either side with those kinds of comments. So, you have to take them seriously, but at the same time, at the same time, you know that you're going to get extremes on either end. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, we've got somebody in the chat. Oh, Jan's here. <laughs> Jan says, I'm so glad my criticism of the bright white included a thumbs up on the organization of the menus and a thank you for working to keep Ravelry fresh. <laughs> Yeah, Jan, you've 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 got that that uh that method down. <laughs> I think you have some experience with that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what uh what 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 comes of the suggestions and the and the changes. So well okay, what now are you I have a question. Oh yeah. Go oh. ahead. No, I have a question. How do you get the chat on the side kelly um so what you can if you want the chat on the side not as a separate little box yeah you go to your chat open your chat mm -hmm. let's see where did it go open the chat box oh mine just does that automatically and then there's oh mm -hmm. there's a little down arrow and it has a little thing that says pop out you see the little down arrow at the top of the chat box? Or maybe it's three little dots no. on the side of the chat box. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, so, it just says save chat. So you never have mind. It as, it's okay. You have it as a pop out. Oh, do you have a thing that says merge to meeting window after save chat? No. Hmm. Let me see. It kind of depends on what you're on, what you're on as to where where you see it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Let's get back to business. So <laughs> projects. Do you want to talk about your projects? Sure. I'll talk about what I'm doing. Or actually, let me talk about what I finished because it's okay. really cool. So I'm gonna do this so I can see a little better. All right. So what I finished since the last time are my paving mitts. Oh yes. Yes. They're snug. I made them and made sure that they would be. So this is your Tunisian crochet. This is Tunisian right? crochet. Yeah. This is really cool. Wow. It's, um, I don't know if you can put it up here. So it's two yarns. And um, the first yarn is a twist fiber studio that's that inner yarn, the rainbow colored yarn. And then the outer yarn is um, a drops fobble, those sock yarn mm -hmm. balls. One of those ones we bought at our very first, the uh, first yarn crawl that we went to Marsha when we, when we decided <laughs> to embark on this <laughs> podcasting adventure. So yes. anyway, I'm, I'm finished with these. Yeah. And this is Ellen, twin set Ellen, Ellen Silva. And the pattern is called paving knit, paving mitts. I really thought they were fast and I'm, you know, I'm pretty new 
I'm really new to Tunisian crochet. You can see one of my thumbs, I don't know if you can see it, one of my thumbs is bigger than the other. Hmm. Um, and one of these I started and had to rip it out. The second one I started it and I had to rip it out and start over because my crochet got tighter as I got more experienced and I had to kind of fix my gauge. But anyway, really love them. I'm gonna make another pair. I think I'm gonna try to uh, make a skinnier pair for my niece because uh, mm -hmm. I have lots of leftover yarn. It's a great pattern for scraps. I think you could mm -hmm. imagine like this yarn that's, that's the var variegated one that mm -hmm. you could just start with one and change to another and mm -hmm. using true. the, the yeah. solid to tie it together would make a really good scrap project. So yeah, I, I love this. Tunisian crochet is so fast and fun. Um, I'm really excited to do, to do some more of these. So I finished this and then I started a pair of socks from hand spun. Okay. Ooh, those are nice. So, oh, so I what's see the fiber? I'm sorry, I'm going to just interrupt. I see in the chat oh. that Amy's here too. Hi, Amy. Amy's green hook. She's a crocheter. So this is Falkland. It's, um, oh, here we, and, uh, uh, Joanne's asking us a question. So do you trap the colored yarn inside of the other with the crochet? Yeah, that's kind of how it works. You go across with a crochet hook and you pick up a whole bunch of stitches in the, I don't remember which color, in the blue, I think, and then you go, I, I can't remember. I followed the pattern <laughs> directions. <laughs> but yeah, you, you pick up a bunch of stitches and then, and then you, um, after you've picked them up, then you crochet them off. And using two colors, one of them stays trapped inside of the other. And I honestly don't remember how, how you set it up, which color. If I had my pattern, I could probably figure it out. You could probably figure it out too, Joanne. Um, so yeah. Oh, Natalie's saying, it looks like you pick up in blue and then take along the rainbow. That's, I think that is what I did. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So more experienced crocheters than I am um, will we'll understand that. It, it's, Tunisian crochet is fun. Didn't you like that class, Marsha, that we took? Yes, it was, it was, yeah, very fun. I'm not sure, though, how you do that in the round. Oh, well, that's pretty interesting. Um, what you actually do is instead of how we would go across mm -hmm. picking up, and then go back crocheting them off mm -hmm. and then go across picking them up and then go back crocheting them off. You go up picking up and then you go back and you pick up the other yarn and then you crochet them off like chasing. And then you go a little further crochet, you know, picking them up and then you go back to where you left off and you, drop them all off. So you're like chasing yourself around, the, your yarns are chasing each other around the circle. And you have to have a crochet okay. hook that has, <laughs> you have crochet hooks <laughs> on each end. <laughs> I, I couldn't figure it out. I don't understand. Until I, I was can't actually, visualize it. <laughs> when I was doing it, I could figure, you know, you can, you can see it much better when you're, when you're doing it. But you have to okay. have, we had a crochet hook on only one end. Right. And you have a crochet hook on either end. Oh, okay. So you pull it like when you do I cord, how you pull it, how you like slide it back to the beginning. It's kind of like that. You okay. crochet it along and then you slide it back to the beginning and then you chase with the other color. Okay. And then you go along. Kind of slide. makes sense. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> Only when you actually do it. So yeah. yeah. Amy says she agrees. It's hard to, uh, explain and hard to visualize and then yeah. Jan says the pattern has links to videos yes I used the videos that's another good point um, the pattern has links um, Ellen has done some video and then she links to a couple of people who have other other videos and I did I did get quite a bit of help from those videos to figure out how to make the how to make the in the round part work mm -hmm. properly so but i would highly recommend it it was a great pattern it was a lot of fun and um tunisian crochet is not 
<clears throat> excuse me, is not, um, it's not as fast as other crochet, at least not for me because I'm new to it, but it's faster than knitting. So, um, yeah. yeah. So anyway, back to my socks. This color is called Tomato and Mink. I can't remember the dyer that I bought it from. It's Falkland, although it feels, could be just my spinning, but it's not as soft as I would expect a Falkland to be. But anyway, it's Falkland and it's a little bit workhorse-ish, crisp. And I spun it as a three ply um, it's chain plied, so it has long color repeats, which is why I have the stripes. Those are just happening mm -hmm. because of the yarn. And, um, and I spun it, I, I, I plied it pretty tightly. Um, and then, so it's a little, you can see it's a little kinky. It, mm -hmm. It's kind of twirling back on itself. But that, again, is going to make a hard, hard wearing sock yarn. Yeah. yeah. So. That's what I'm working on now. And then I'm back to work on the cardigan, the Marianne's cardigan. And since we are, oh, did I bring it with me? Yes, just a second. <clears throat> and I'm just going to say, um, Pat joined us. So I'm oh, saying good. hi, Pat. Oh, hi, Pat. What happened to the links on the, oh, I don't know. The link to groups. Oh, you know where I found, I always go to the forums. Thing, and right by the little envelope is a, like a comment box on Ravelry. And in that comment box, if you click on the comment box, you get the forums page that shows all the forums that you're part of, the groups that you're part of. That's the way I go into the groups. Um, I think Amy is saying it's under community. I, th I think you're right, Amy, it is. But, but I found it in the, um, actually, while, while I'm here, let me just go and so up where it says my notebook and you have the little envelope for your messages, there's a little comment bubble. And that comment bubble, if you hover over it, has all your different um, forum information in there. And if you click on it, you get a page that's forums. But I don't know if people, if people um, use that page or not. I use the forums page all the time because it allows me to see several forums all at once. And you know what's new in each one. So here's my sweater once again. I'm look oh look how much progress I've made since the armhole. Wow. And where's the so where's let's see your uh, um, so how does it look where your messy uh, side? Yeah, your messy side. <laughs> let's see if you can see this. Let me let me fix so I can see the video as well as everyone else. So here's the messy side. Wait, let me rest it so I'm not stretching it. So it's, you, oh, it I mean, it's good. a faux seam. And so that's the messy side. Let me just put it up there again. And then here's the other side with the faux seam. So they both have kind of a line. I mean, I'm doing the same mm -hmm. thing on both sides. Let me see if I can put them together compare them. Yeah, this, <laughs> this has been quite the, <laughs> quite the little project here. Okay, so here are the two, here are the two side by side. So you can see the difference yeah, no, they, between them, but it's yeah. not, it's not as bad as it was. Mm -hmm. So, so I've made some progress. I'm about five inches, five inches down the side here. And, um, and then can I you remember away. the pain of ripping it out. Uh, well, when I look at the two balls of yarn, yes, because mm -hmm. these were cakes that I had to unwind, right? So I had to, from the outside of the cake, I had to unwind them. And then once I got the outside of the cake unwound and wound into balls, then I had mm -hmm. to unravel and keep winding. So mm. yes, I much prefer little cakes inside of my project bag, right? Because it has the little hooks that yeah. my yarn goes through. I much mm -hmm. prefer little cakes of yarn sitting at the bottom of my project bag. But you know, in the scheme of things, I'm going to be much happier. Yeah, with this the way the way it's working now. So, 
So yeah. And then what else do I have in my list here? Oh, my spinning. So last thing, I have been, I have had for almost 20 years, uh, tricolor cotton roving. And this is what it's, this is cotton roving. And so this is what it's spinning into. Mm-hmm. And I have, um, I had, I think I had four ounces of it that I had in a bowl in the sunroom already spun another four ounces of roving that I now have finished spinning and it's, it's mm-hmm. um, drying in the sun today. And then as I was getting ready for today's show, I was getting out my voluminous cotton stash, <laughs> which is not even all. <laughs> I found in the bag this skein. So this is another two ounces. So I think I have eight, ten ounces. I think I have ten ounces, which is a lot of cotton. Cotton is... I mean, it's thin, so there's a lot of yardage. This is a two-ounce skein of two-ply, and it's 440 yards. So I have a lot of yardage. And that's because this is the cotton that has the denim in it, right? Yeah. Old old mm -hmm. jeans. The blue is recycled recycled denim. And I also found Mm. a skein. This is... um, this was sitting with it. This is just the recycled denim by itself. Oh. Yeah, I would expect it to be bluer than that. Oh, you know what? Or is it- this is, I think, it doesn't have a label, but actually I think this is, I shouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> I think this is recycled denim blended with green cotton. Okay. Uh, this is so old I have no idea (laughs) but anyway it's really pretty and I I I like it but I have no more of that fiber somebody in the 60s wore those jeans probably yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh so yeah I have um I have the cotton spinning that I had been had been hanging around for a really long time is now done and I boiled it this morning and it's uh, washed and it's now hanging up in the yard drying so very nice so what are you uh working on he's having a dream (laughs) can you hear him barking yes (laughs) is he on his back he's on his back yeah yeah um what am i working on okay i haven't oh i did finish something um, well, I'll get to that. I'll do my, pro- my knitting projects first. I, um, I really haven't worked on anything knitting wise except my t-shirt. And this is the summer fjord. I have to get it done. And, um, it looks huge, but it has to have a neckline. Oh yeah. That's see pretty, that? Marcia. Yeah. Um, and this is the Quince and Co. Sparrow. Yes, I think it's Barrow. And it's blue and then gold and white. And I'm on, there's four um, row pattern repeat, and I'm on the middle of the third one. So okay. I've been working on that knitting-wise pretty much all the time. And I like, the, um, I like knitting with linen. And I'm going to be brave, Kelly. I'm going to, because the swatch, I just threw in the washing machine and then threw in the dryer. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make myself throw this in the washing machine and throw it in the dryer. Well, yeah, very, if you did it with the swatch. You do that you... all the time. I'm super, like the idea of throwing your hand knits in the dryer makes me super nervous, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay. I haven't, I worked a little bit on the sock, but not enough. Um, and then, but now spinning, I did finish. Um, I did Huckleberry knits. This oh, is. Um, not, wait, wait, wait. I just have to stop you. So you saved your label. That's so smart because, because otherwise you end up with a skein like this, no tag, no nothing. And then you're trying <laughs> well, to remember I only can do it if I buy ro- <laughs> I can only do it if I buy roving. Yeah, but you have, if I, you if, have tags a, hanging off of them. 
Yeah, so I each one I've got, so I have, okay, I'm gonna show you what I do. You're, and maybe I'm crazy. So like. No, you're organized. On my label, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, I yeah. write, you know, it's Tuckleberry Knits, mm -hmm. the fiber content, how many yards. And then you see in the lower right hand corner, mm -hmm. I put what number skein it is and how a total of how many. Okay. So what does it say? This is number five of five. Um, and then I've got like one of five. Anyway, so I, this is, um, it's camel, merino and silk. And I think I have about, I have about 600 yards. Oh, nice. Um, and it's very, I think it's, um, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I actually, I finished spinning it and just threw it in the bin with all the hands, but I had to go <laughs> dig it out this morning to record. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do with it now. It's just, I just remember when I bought it, it was just so, um, it was like the fiber was like a cloud. It was so soft yeah, and really luxurious. I think, yeah. I think we bought this when I, we were together. Do we buy this when we were at the St. Distaff yeah. day mm -hmm, spin-in? Mm -hmm. Is that where I bought it? Okay. Yeah. So That's anyway, the, same where, starting. the same day that I bought the um, uh, Tasmanian comeback, the orange Tasmanian comeback yeah. that I did a few episodes ago. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, then, so I, now I started my second project for the, and this is for the, our summer spin-in, which we'll talk about, but um, I'm doing, I have a total of eight ounces, again, Huckleberry knits, but a total of eight ounces of this, and this is 80% um, American Targi and 10% Bamboo and 10% silk. So I have two skeins of that. And what my plan is to do a three ply and do, since I have eight ounces of this, I'm gonna do two plies of, the, of this Targi. And then I have this aqua color. I have four ounces of that. So I'll do a one ply of this. And this is from uh, Socked In Farms. Um, and it's 50% alpaca and 50% baby doll south down wool. And you made socks out of baby doll, right? Yeah, from, from socked in, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those oh, the socks same. I just finished. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I've got, and I've spun one bobbin. Oh, that's pretty. So. That's really yeah. pretty. So it has pretty long repeats, color repeats. So I'm kind of interested to see how it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. um, that's it for me on projects. I don't think I have anything else. I'm still swatching for another sweater with the um, Elemental Effects Cormo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't swatched again with my um, Targi lamb yet, but I'm really I leaning toward... Um, I'm really leaning toward the dark and stormy by Thea mm -hmm. Coleman for that pattern, but I haven't, I haven't uh, torn out my swatch and re-swatched yet. And then um, I did get a message from Cheryl on Ravelry. Say, I think it was her name is Cheryl saying that I should, um, I, sh I could do a, a custom fit and that it would work really well. And I could even use that same ca cable pattern if mm -hmm. I wanted to use my cable swatch in the custom fit. So that's also on the table, but I haven't made, I haven't made any decision yet. I've been, I, I've been focused on spinning more than, um, than knitting, except, you know, my socks here that I'm working mm -hmm. on. So, so yeah, I haven't gotten too far with my, with my swatching. So, and then what else do we need to talk about? That's well, before projects. we go too far, Marsha, we're at okay. 34 minutes. So oh. do you want to save? And okay. Yeah. Let me. Uh... So for those of you. Um, in the audience at home. Uh, we do this because the file gets too big otherwise. And we've had some 
we've had some problems just to always say yeah <laughs> so we stop we try to remember we don't always do it I'll just check and see if anybody else joined us. Actually, while we're doing this, um, Amy and Jan, if you want to unmute and introduce yourselves, you're more than welcome to do that. Hey guys, this is, this is Jan. Um, I have a picture of our sheep up as my image instead of running my video because I'm actually listening to this with half an ear while I'm making strawberry shortcake for dinner tonight. Yum. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, the, let me I'll turn the video on for a second. So, there you go. So here in my kitchen, beautiful, beautiful <laughs> strawberries. Oh my gosh. Oh, look. Well, here we are. <laughs> Amish neighbors who live in Lancaster County and we run a sheep farm. We also have a couple alpaca and a yak and a mini donkey and some guinea fowl and chickens and all kinds of whatnot and uh, big news to come for Fairwinds Farm. That's the name of the farm. My son and daughter-in-law and grandson are living with us right now and son and grand uh, daughter-in-law are helping me build out a website so that we can make our products available online. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> we were doing it at fiber festivals and knitting retreats, and that's not happening this year. So yeah. it's forcing yeah. me to actually get a storefront up. So that's who I am. But I, just, I have to go pick up Milo in just a few minutes. He was tutored today. Oh, <laughs> I saw your Instagram. I thought that was so cute. <laughs> yeah, he's so He's doing just fine, the vet says. He's, he's come, Milo, for the rest of you, Milo is our, our, one of our whippets. And uh, he's a little overdue in getting his, his neutering. And so mm. we'll, we'll treat him with some loving care tonight. So when I disappear in a few minutes, that's why. Okay. Well, thanks for coming. And Ellen says two thumbs up on talking about paving mitts. Oh. He said it's a good thing they have thumb holes. <laughs> 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 oh, <yeah>. uh, <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> That's cool. And Amy. Hi. Yeah, hi. I'm Amy Greenhook on Ravelry. I don't have a farm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just a couple of cats and a ferret, or not a ferret. We used to have ferrets. A couple of cats and a parrot. That's it. So, That's kind of like a farm. Socks. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I'd have more animals if we live somewhere where we could, but. Uh, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like llamas, alpacas, sheep, sheep. Yeah, goats. Oh, <laughs> well, my sister is, is like really into goats, and she doesn't live anywhere where she can have them, but she just. Yeah. Has goats. Actually, I have a friend with a, who she and her significant other just a, um, a couple years ago bought some property and are turning it into a little like hobby farm. And they have goats and chickens and a, a wimpy rooster that is henpecked. And <laughs> so anyway, yeah. I'm up in Salem, Oregon, and it's kind of raining off and on today. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm glad you can make it. All right, so let's, um, I'm saved. Marsha, are you ready to yes, start I back am. up? Okay. Back to here. Okay, should I start? Uh, yes, go ahead. I'm gonna start too. All right, I'll count in. Okay. One. One. Two. two. Three. Three. So what else do we have to talk about, Marsha? We have our summer spin-in. You've been talking a little bit about your spinning. Do you have some, uh, some other future plans or? Well, I did go um, um, Sunday. 
we did have an outing. We went up to, um, well, I should back up and remind people that my friend Kim is living with me right now for about three months during her kitchen remodel. And uh, she's been going down every day to look at the, cause she's within walking distance. And so she's been going down every day to look at her house and a little shocked, I think that walls are gone. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's gutted, you know, mm -hmm. anyway, I haven't seen it, but uh, anyway, but we did have an outing on Sunday. We went over, we took the ferry over to Port Townsend and um, actually to Kingston, went up and saw Port Gamble um, and then went on up to Port Townsend. We did go to Bazaar Girls um, in Port Townsend. And I should just say too about um, safety Everywhere we went, we, we didn't, that was the only shop we went in, but, you know, masks were required. They only allowed, uh, I think, three people in at a time. Uh, when you walked in, you had to sanitize your hands, which makes sense because everybody's touching product, yeah. Yeah. you know. So, it, it, overall, I think really safe. I mean, um, but otherwise, we were just in the car. We went into Bizarre Girls, and then we went to the beach to let the dogs uh, play on the beach. But anyway, at Bizarre Girl, I bought little bags of um, mohair that have been dyed. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I'm planning on doing is I have a, um, a gray fleece that I, I've one of a few fleeces that's not been washed or carded. So I'm going to wash and card that. And I think I'm going to um, add the mohair to the gray. Mm -hmm. um, I think it'll be pretty. And I was thinking I might, um, I just to turn around this around and see. There's Orkney. Can you see him? Oh yeah. Yeah. Now it's showing up. Mm -hmm. They must be back from their walk. Anyway. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm going to add those uh, mohair and Kelly, I was going to ask you, I know that in the I've done added, I blended mohair in with the fiber, with the carter. We've done mm -hmm. that in the past. I was wondering is if you can, if you, as you're, after you card the gray fiber, if you're spinning with it, if you could just pull off little pieces of the mohair and just spin it in with the, would that work, do you think? You can try it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you could try it. You might not get as much in it as you wanted depending on mm -hmm. the, the color, how much color you wanted. Um, there's also a way that you can like sort of fluff, uh, fluff up one end of the lock and, and it's called tail spinning. And then you have little curly cues of the lock sticking out from your, from your yarn, like my Sunny Bono jacket yarn. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do kind of like that too. Um, hmm. But it, I mean, if you held it, if you held it kind of together, you probably could draft it, you know, help draft it in. Mm -hmm. it might be easier it might be easier to just card them together card it yeah okay you could control it a little bit better but it's all yeah. an experiment you could try yeah. it you have you have enough you have enough fleece that you could you could try it how much mohair do you have, I have um there's i think each package is an ounce okay so it's not a lot how many you know how many packets did you buy Two. Two. Okay. Yeah, that's, well, and I, mean, I should that's... say each, each, let me just say two, each packet has four colors in it. Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah. you know how, you know how the, the mohair, you, you had given me some mohair also, mm -hmm. and you know how it, it, when you dye the, you, you dye it a really dark, intense color. Yeah. So then when you do blend it, 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 um, I yeah, don't know, softens. tempers it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Softens. Yeah. 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 No, I'd say, I'd say experiment if you can do it without having to card it together, but you're going to have to card the gray anyway, right? Cause it's not even washed. Right. You said. So yeah. you could, you could just card it, card it together and it doesn't take anyway. very much. Oh, and Jan's saying she'd consider adding it in while plying. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, Hmm. That's a good idea. That's kind of interesting. Would it go like just would it like just grab in between the the two plies, I guess? Well, you have some you have some sampling to do, Marsha. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm trying to, you know, Kelly, you know this about me that, you know, not only do I always buy a sweater quantities worth of yarn, but when I spin, it's like, I want to spin a sweater quantity and right. <laughs> or I, I buy a fleece with the idea that I'm going to make some big project with it. And what I am learned from you and what I'm really trying to do is um, um, just spin for the sake of spinning. Yeah. If you'd ever, it, it's great if you can make something out of the yarn, but that's not the point. The point is spinning. So, yeah. okay, Jan added something else too. It would add a mini marked effect and probably have a bit of tail sticking out. Yeah. I, and yeah. I think that should be marled, like a marled effect. Oh, that marled. Makes, yeah, that makes sense. I think you should try that. That would be kind of cool. And you wouldn't have to do very much. I mean, you could just do a few yards to, you know, to sample something. All you have to do is, yeah. is, yeah. um, uh, spin a few yards and then, and then just wind it on like an index card, mm -hmm. you know, wind a little tiny skein on the index card. And then you can see what it looks like compared to other, the other things you yeah. try. So, but I also know that sometimes I just feel like just doing stuff and not, not testing it out first, just, <laughs> just trying it. So, well, so I have, since we're talking about, <laughs> Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. You're going to no, say you go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to say, and you're probably, is just, since we were talking about spinning, I was just going to remind people about the, the summer spin in. Oh yeah. The dates and stuff, the information. Yeah. So it, it started on May 25th and it goes through September 7th and we'll just uh, spin something. Or if you're not a spinner and you have some ha access to hand spun, just knit something with hand spun and mm -hmm. we're going to have prizes. Um, yeah. Do you, I, I interrupted you, Kelly. Do you have more uh, plans for spinning? Well, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my, uh, my cotton hoard. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Let's hear it. Oh, true so, confessions now. Yeah, huh? it's true confessions okay. time. So I was in the habit, I think I've, I've mentioned this a lot, a lot, of buying cotton like by the pound. So I have a lot of it because, because cotton you know, spins quite thin. So here is, this is um, eight ounces of Fox fiber organic. This is Sally Fox's uh, fiber, but this is back from not now where she's growing and selling from her farm in California, but this was back when she was, I think when she was first in California and then she was pushed out of California because the white cotton growers didn't want colored cotton potentially pollinating mm. with their white cotton. So she was pushed out of California and she's been in several states. Um, she's very interesting. There have been several people who have interviewed her. Um, and so if you can find an interview, a podcast who have in, who's interviewed her, I think um, the gist, the, the podcast that um, was done by the gist yarn company, G, G I S T. Um, they mm -hmm. interviewed her and a few other people have interviewed her. Anyway, very interesting woman. She's still farming. Um, she's in the process of putting in a cotton crop right now. So that's her brown cotton. And here's her green cotton, which kind of doesn't look green after all these years. It might be mm. more green on the inside of this ball. I don't know if you can see that. It's green cotton and yeah, it it's, gets, it's clearly green. Yeah. yeah. And it gets more green as you, um, as you boil it. So I have a couple of sample skeins of this that I have actually boiled with uh, washing soda and they're more like khaki green color, not khaki brown, but more like a, a olivey green color. So this will be so interesting. So Kelly, I want to ask you about boiling because you also mentioned your cotton skein of yarn mm -hmm. that you've, that you boiled it this morning. Mm -hmm. Do you really like boil it at a hard boil yeah. or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what, it, and so why do you do that? It, is the... <laughs> there, I'm sure there are some science behind it. Um, cotton, unlike wool, cotton is actually stronger when it's wet. And there's something about that process that changes. I think there's a, like a coating maybe on the cotton that it takes off or helps to take off. And then um, it also can deepen the colors. If you use a, a, not acid, a base solution, you can deepen the colors. I didn't notice any change to the brown cotton that was in my tricolor cotton uh, after I washed it. But now that I found this, 
old skein, I might be able to tell the difference. I do know that the, the water was like the color of tea when I was done. So there's definitely something that's coming. It's not something just, that comes it's not just it, 20 yeah. years of dirt from my stash. <laughs> there's something else that comes off of it. Um, and, and I know there's some science behind it, but I don't have that at my front of my brain. I've maybe read it at some point, but, mm -hmm. um, but it is a thing that's done to set your, to finish your yarn. Um, if you spin, if you spin cotton. So I'm going to, and it changes the color. So I'm going to sp spin some of this. And then I have some other cotton that was given to me. I think I don't, I, and I, these are kind of unknowns, but these were given to me when I was spinning cotton at the fair. Some people who didn't like spinning cotton brought me their, their cotton. And then I have a cotton linen blend that I bought. This was at 1.8 ounces. I don't mm -hmm. know where the rest of it is. If I, I maybe have used this yarn in something at some point. And then I have linen. So I have Euroflax. And then I have some, so there's white. And then mm -hmm. there's some that I've dyed. And now that it's been wet, it's very stiff, but I, I used a bright pink and I could only mm -hmm. get this pale color because linen is hard to dye. And I got it. Uh, do you use just the acid dyes or do you use the, the cotton no, dyes on the linen? Um, no, I used the uh, fiber reactive dyes that I use for cotton. Um, for cotton. Dyes. Yeah. And then I have this one that was commercially dyed. Again, another... I think this was a, is a pound ball because this is heavy, heavier. So I've got mm -hmm. this one that's linen that I'd like to spin up. I am not going to get all this fun this, this summer in the spinning, but I have so many choices. So, and then, and then I, I, the other thing I wanted to ask you too, because I know, are you spinning this on your little Herbie or the, or the, the chalk, the book chakra? Thing are, that you the have? charka? Um, Tarka, I, thank you. I'm Chakra. I'm using the Herbie right now for the for the tricolor okay. cotton. I'm using the Herbie with, and I have a lace flyer, and so mm -hmm. the other skein, the original skeins were sp spun on the on that wheel. So that's what I continued with. So I don't. Um, it's just easier to ply from there. But then I last summer I spun these. No, no, not last summer. Last summer was broken foot summer. The summer uh, before, that, you started those at the knockers retreat, right? Um, is that where well, you did those? These are from the fair. I have some from my charka, oh, okay. but these are from the great mm -hmm. wheel. So, oh, okay. Remember the wheel that I got from, um, from Cindy Q. Mm -hmm. So these are from the great wheel and I spun at the fair and I have a whole bag full of them and these will go right onto my, uh, shuttle so I can weave. I'm planning to weave with, with these maybe this summer maybe not but i have quite a few of them because i spun at the fair for i don't know a week something like that so so i have quite a bit of of um, cotton on those little spindles oh um joanne just put in the chat yarn stories podcast did a two-part interview with sally fox episode 201 okay. and 202 from november 2018 very interesting I, yeah i think that might have been one of the ones that i that I listen to too. She's, she's a mate. She's an amazing, amazing woman. I just, in fact, I just bought flower from her. Um, she has, do you remember, were you here when I made wheat berry? Did I make that wheat berry salad when you were here? Mm -mm, no. Did you ever have that? Okay. So last, mm -mm. last time I ordered from her, I ordered and they came as wheat berries, not as flour. I had done something wrong in the ordering. And so I, you know, found some recipes that used wheat berries. And then this time I went to her website and she had, um, she had flour and I could see where you could get it ground. So I ordered uh, two bags, two pounds of, uh, of her flour too. So she's got, she's got cotton, she's got flour, she's got merino, uh, merino sheet. Um, so very interesting, interesting person. So anyway, yeah, I have uh, cotton plans at least, maybe linen, although I, I'm not, 
I'm not as, I don't find spinning linen as enjoyable as spinning cotton. Mm -hmm. I really like spinning cotton. It's pretty fun. It's just kind of magically turns into yarn from your hand, from this little puff of something in your hand. It just, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you don't, you know, you don't draft it like pinch and pull. Yeah. I was, I was going to, how long is the staple on the cotton? It's um pretty short. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so yeah, like uh that's is that a, not even an inch, is no, it? No, not even an inch. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I can Just see the that. Knuckle. Yeah. It's it's a little bit longer than the knuckle, the last knuckle of my finger. Yeah, it's it's pretty short. But so you don't you don't really I don't really spin it by, you know, pinch drafting. I just hold it. I just hold mm -hmm. it and then let the let the let the twist I hold it and I let the twist go into my fiber and I just Yeah. You know, hold it like a butterfly is what so I So that's why you can do it. It's easy to do on the walking wheel because you need the <clears throat> don't you need hand. the one hand to turn the wheel. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So you have to and on the walking wheel you have to do it that way. Yeah. Um, and since I've had a lot of practice with the walking wheel, it's it goes pretty pretty easily on on mm -hmm. the curvy. My other wheel doesn't go fast enough. My um, well, I don't know. I haven't tried it, um, but it uh, my Norwegian the the Wyatt wheel, it's mm -hmm. uh, double drive, and my Herbie is uh, Scotch tension, and I think with Scotch tension it's easier to spin cotton because you can really control your tension and I pretty much turn the tension almost all the way off and mm -hmm. and have very very low um, tension but you, I, I, I think the scotch tension for me is easier because you, than a double drive because you have a lot of control you know that little mm -hmm. knob gives you a lot of control over your tension where with the double drive you don't have as much at least I don't have as much fine yeah. control over the tension. Okay. So, well, I'll, I have some cotton here that I bought, <clears throat> I think at Black Sheep when I first got my wheel and I was so excited about all these spinning, all these different fibers that I bought, you know, mohair and alpaca and cotton. And I think I bought a fleece and I went a little crazy. So I should try getting my cotton out and trying it. Yeah. Yeah. Because mine's old it. too now. <laughs> You should well, come not, out and see the light. Not as old as mine. I most of this, <laughs> most of this uh, pile of cotton here behind me is, I would say probably from two thousand, between mm -hmm. nineteen ninety eight and two thousand one. That was the that was my first you know my early days of spinning where I bought, mm -hmm. I bought everything I could buy in in one pound quantities <laughs> so yeah I, I that's learned, what i did too so <laughs> i've learned my lesson well, yeah actually i say that i've learned my lesson you haven't learned your lesson I, i'm Kelly. sure i haven't really learned my lesson <laughs> i've seen yeah, your garage that's a lie <laughs> <laughs> that's a flat out lie oh, and you see my basement mm -hmm. you see my basement so yeah. anyway Okay. So, um, what else do we need to talk about? Did we talk? Oh, we did say when it was over, right? It ends on yeah. Labor Day, September 7th. Okay. Um, well, I had just a little, a little announcement that I wanted to make. One of our, uh, listeners, um, one of our listeners emailed me and said, uh, hey, well, let me just read what she said. She says, I live near a rescue farm in Ohio. The owners have several Jacob and Icelandic sheep and a few mixed breed lambs. All of the sheep and a few of the lambs were sheared yesterday, first time in two years. Oh, you can kind of see where I'm going with this because, uh, and it's related to our last, our, what we just finished talking about that greed, mm -hmm. right? Fiber greed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Icelandic wool is pretty matted, but the Jacob, although pretty weathered at the ends, looks gorgeous to my inexperienced eye. The farm owners don't know what to do with the wool and can't afford to have it processed. They will gladly give it to anyone who wants it, but of course the takers will have to pay to have it shipped and processed. The farm can be found on Facebook, Bell Point Rescue Farm. So I 
I um, told her that I would put this information out for people. I checked, you know, with her to make sure that the owners were willing to get, you know, to get contacted from people about any interest that they might have and were willing to pack up and ship um, if they did get people who were interested. Um, two years is a long time, just as a disclaimer to people, two years is a long time between shearings. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you, you, you have to be, you have to be, you know, it's free, right? It's a free fleece. You pay shipping. So there's some risk there, but, but if anyone is interested, um, they can be found on Facebook, Bell Point Rescue Farm. And if that, if you can't get in touch with them that way, I think I did have an email, um, a message on Ravelry this morning, but I didn't have a chance to grab that email address. And, and I'm not sure I'd want to put that email address out as broadly as the podcast, but get in touch with me mm -hmm. if you're interested and I can, and I can give you um, contact information for them. If anybody is interested in a, a real fiber adventure with this <laughs> two years of, of fleece, um, mixed Jacob Icelandic mixed breed lambs, people who don't. And the other thing is that people who don't grow their sheep for fiber don't know how to keep it clean. So, you know, it, I'm sure it has a lot of vegetable matter. Um, it's, it's a lot, of, it'll be a lot of work to get it to be something that you can, that you can use probably and probably you would pay to have it shipped and you would end up throwing a lot of it away that that's you know that's the other thing you could skirt it very heavily and come up with something really nice but you paid to have all of it whatever you paid to have shipped you paid for all of it and you're going to be throwing some of it away um but i have to yeah. say i'm tempted i'm very tempted <laughs> well talking about it i'm tempted but i have to say no <laughs> So well, and I ha I I got a lot of good spinning out of uh, bags and bags and bags of of you know my meat sheep yarn that that blanket that I made that you have of Ben's <laughs> <laughs> do it Kelly and tell us all about it I think I might ask to get a little something so I can have a little bit more um, information for you yeah <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Natalie says, this is how I got three Hampshire down fleeces from the local kitty farm and eight Wesson fleeces. I don't speak French, but that's what it looks like. These are great fiber adventures though. Yeah. 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 I, I got some really good spinning from that meat sheep fiber for years. I mean, years. And I still have a quilt bat in my trunk. Um, I got I got a quilt bat and I made a quilt for my, or a comforter for my sister. And I have a quilt bat that I still am saving for myself from it. So, I mean, there are lots of things you can do with wool that is not uh, spinnable or that just mm -hmm. seems like too much work to spin. And there's a lot that you can do to spin really nice yarn out of, out of wool that's not the greatest. So, oh, bye Natalie. Glad you can make it. And Thanks Amy, for and, coming. Oh, did Amy and Amy too? and Amy had to go too. So okay, bye, Amy. Thank you for coming. Yeah. So anyway, if you're interested, Bell Point Rescue Farm. It's B E L L E uh, P O I N T. Bell Point. So I'll put information in the in the show notes, oh. and also if you want the the uh, email address, I can I can forward that to you. Do you hear my chickens? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, then now let me look at our notes. Is that everything now? I think that is everything. One last thing I just wanted to mention again about the patron, uh, Patreon, patron yeah. appreciation. Um, any, uh, I have had some people contact me, but anyone who was a patron in the early part of July, so all of the the current patron, uh, the current patrons, as of the beginning of July, um, we Marsha and I are giving away a pattern, um, a, a Ravelry download pattern of your choice, up to a seven dollar value. So, uh, give us a a message, send a message to me, and let me know what pattern you like, and I can 
and I can make sure you get that pattern. So we wanted to uh, just thank our our pa our patrons on Patreon. So. So all right, I think that's that's all of it. Marcia, okay. So shall we say bye? Yes, we'll say goodbye and we'll be back in two weeks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.